Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I do have a Fragrance Buy haul, so a few fragrances that were sent to me complimentary from Fragrance Buy. And if you guys have not checked out Fragrance Buy, definitely do check them out if you are in the market for some new fragrances. I have been shopping there for years now and it is my favorite place to get perfumes at a discount. And if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Alithia and on this channel we do talk a lot about perfumes and I am personally on a mission to curate my top 25 or 30 perfumes for life. So this is like an ongoing journey for me. This is my way of sharing that journey with you guys. I also do a little bit of home decor, fashion, declutters, um, minimalism, other things like that. So if that sounds like your jam, definitely head on down and subscribe. Feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram as well. And with that out of the way, let's get started in today's haul. All right, guys. So like I mentioned, I do have a fragrance by perfume haul for you today. And some of these were winners and one of them was a definite fail. All of them are really good though, but one of them for me was a bit of a fail but maybe somebody else would like it so yeah three of these were actually purchased from fragrance buy two of them were purchased previously from a different place but you can get all of these from fragrance buy on a discount and with that out of the way let's get into today's haul okay guys so the first one is guest seductive red and now i have to say right off the hop i'm not a huge fan of the guest fragrances i don't have any of them in my collection at the moment um, but i have tried quite a few of them um, i have had the guest seductive noir which is gorgeous and it's a pretty close dupe for Mangerlan, except I still prefer Mangerlan. Um, but what I think about the guest perfumes in general, I will say are that I think that they are okay. I don't think that they're great, but I think that if you're looking for a really affordable grab and go and you want something that smells good, but you don't want to spend a ton of money, um, they're not bad. And some of them have good lasting power and stuff like that. A few of them smell a little bit dated. Overall, I'm not a huge fan of the guest fragrances, but I did want to review this one for you guys because apparently this is a pretty close dupe of Backheart Rouge. It also smells quite similar to Ariana Grande Cloud and it also has been compared to Tom Ford Lost Cherry. So I thought this would be a really unique one and a really neat one to test out because if you guys are in the market for Backheart Rouge or Lost Cherry or something like that, you're looking for something similar but you don't want to pay a huge price tag, then this might be a great affordable alternative. And you can get this on Fragrance Buy for I think like $35 or something like that. So it is a very, very affordable perfume. So first of all, I'll give you a close up of the bottle. To be honest, I do not like the guest bottles. I think that overall they do not look very expensive. They look like something that you would find on the shelf at Marshall's. <laughs> they look like something that, you know, people might not be that into or doesn't really get purchased or whatever and as a result they end up sitting on discount shelves for some reason. So to me I don't love the bottles. Um, this one also has a little bit of a bubble in it. Like it's just it's just not the most expensive feel. It's not the most luxurious feel when it comes to a bottle. So the notes in this fragrance are cherry, almond, pink pepper, cherry blossom, magnolia, violet, vanilla, tonka bean, and sandalwood. I did wear this on my skin the other day and I will tell you my thoughts. So Okay, so when you first spray this on your skin, my immediate thought is Backheart Rouge for about two seconds. My immediate thought is, oh, Backheart Rouge. And then about five seconds later, it smells like Ariana Grande Cloud. Very, very, in fact, I would say this is closer to Cloud than it is to BR540. A lot of people say those two are dupes. They are not dupes. They have similarities and they have a similar vibe and a similar airy quality, but they're definitely not dupes. This one is definitely closer closer to cloud than it is to BR540. But this one also has the addition of a very strong cherry note. So that for me is where the difference is. Personally, I'm not a cherry person. I don't like Tom Ford's Lost Cherry simply because I don't like the smell of cherry. I don't like cherry drinks, cherry medicine, cherry candies. <laughs> that is where I get turned off of this fragrance. It does have a very um, sweet, synthetic -y, almost medicinal cherry quality. It does smell pleasant initially when you first spray it. I do definitely get that Ariana Grande Cloud Backheart Rouge 540 vibe, which I really actually enjoy. Um, so this one I wouldn't say is a dupe. If people smell this and say, oh, this is a good dupe, it's not really that close of a dupe. It smells close for a fleeting moment. And then it changes and becomes more of a medicinal, sweet, kind of like a cherry lollipop or a cherry medicine almost. Um, it's borderlining a little too close on like children's Advil for me, um, if I'm being totally honest. So that's on me though. 
The deep, deep dry down is quite nice. It has this vanilla tonka bean kind of woody, soft, like dry down, but it still does have that sort of reminiscent, sweet, medicinal cherry quality even into the dry downs. I think the whole feeling of the brand, the packaging, the cherry note in here, the whole thing just doesn't really quite do it for me if I'm being perfectly honest. But I think that if you love cherry, it would be a good one to check out. If you're looking for something that is close to Backheart Rouge, but not like maybe 50% close, and you don't mind a cherry note and you want something that has pretty good lasting power. That is one thing I can say about this. It does have good lasting power. Personally, for me, it is not my cup of tea. I would not wear this. Um, but I think that it might be good for some people who are out there. So check out the reviews on Fragrantica. See what you think. See what other people are saying. It's not a terrible scent. It's just that for me personally, the whole package together, especially given that it has that medicinal cherry note, just doesn't really do it for me. So... And that is Guess Seductive Red, and that is my fail from today's video. All of the other ones are actually really, really good. All right, the next one, you guys, is from BDK Parfums, and it is in this really, really beautiful bottle, and this is Bouquet de Angry. I hope I'm saying that properly. It could be Hongri, but I'm gonna say Bouquet de Angry, and I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, please feel free to correct me down below, because I'm not a French connoisseur. So BDK Parfums. Now, this is a beautiful, floral, fruity fragrance for the summertime. This is very reminiscent of Chanel Chanso Tendre and also Marc Jacobs Daisy. If you like Chanso Tendre, there's a good chance you will also really like this one. And if you like Marc Jacobs Daisy, there, were, there will be a good chance you'll like this one as well. Now I do have it on my arm. I wanted to give you guys a like a fresh take on how I feel about it. First of all, I'll talk about the bottle a little bit. So the bottle I think is really stunning. I really like all of the BDK Parfums packaging. The only thing I don't love about it is the really big black heavy cap. It is a really nice weighted cap. It does have some heft to it. It feels very luxurious. The whole house has a very luxurious feeling. I've sampled a lot of perfumes. In fact, I think I've sampled every perfume from this house. So the notes that you have in Bouquet de Angri are pear, strawberry, and cassis. You also have Turkish rose, jasmine sandback, and Lorinox. I'm not sure what Lorinox is. You also have musk, amber, and cedar. So this is quite a musky, fruity fragrance, and I do have it freshly sprayed on my arm here about five minutes ago. So on first spray, I actually get Marc Jacobs Daisy even more than I get Chance Otondra. It's kind of like perfectly in the middle between Otondra and Daisy. As it starts to dry down, it becomes less and less like those perfumes and more and more like something different. I do think it does bring something different to the table. My initial impression of this one when I first smelled it when I had a sample back in the day was it was too similar to those two fragrances for me to ever look into getting this one. This is a beautiful fragrance for the spring and the summertime. It would be an everyday grab and go, very easy to just throw on. You don't have to think too hard, very inoffensive, very pleasant, very light. Is it groundbreaking? No, definitely not groundbreaking, definitely not something that we haven't seen before. However, this is, I think is like BDK's interpretation of a spring summer fruity floral. This is like their version of a spring summer fruity floral because I don't think they actually have any other fragrances like this in their line. So right now on my skin, it is very lovely, you guys. It's also reminding me a little bit of Lancome Idol. Actually, it's probably at this point reminding me more of Lancome Idol than Daisy and Chanso Tendre. It's very, very beautiful. It's very feminine. It's very elegant. It's very pretty. This has a more expensive feel than Marc Jacobs Daisy. Longevity is not crazy, but it's not terribly weak either. I would say that this would be a moderate lasting fragrance. This one I definitely would recommend for Mother's Day gifts. Um, if you're looking for something that is fresh, fruity, pretty, heavy on the rose, you do have to like rose, you do have to like your musks. Yeah, it's really nice. And I do think that the price point isn't bad because these bottles are quite big. You do get a 100 ml bottle for the price that you pay for BDK, especially on Fragrance Buy. You can get these for under $200. It's actually a pretty good deal. So the next two fragrances are actually two that I got in a little package together when I was in the city the other week. And I did mention these in a haul video, but some people might not have seen that haul video. It was kind of like a makeup and perfume haul together. 
I personally am not like a huge, huge makeup junkie, so I know that I don't click on a lot of those videos, so I know you guys probably don't either. There's probably lots of you who are just here for perfume stuff, so I thought I would mention these in today's video as well. So this is Jo Malone Wood Sage and Sea Salt. This is just a little miniature, super cute, love the bottles, and I also have the Peony and Blush Suede. And I did tell you guys in that haul video that I actually enjoy the Peony and Blush Suede so much that I have ordered a large bottle of this, and I'm really, really excited to get it. Um, why don't we do the Wood Sage and Sea Salt first? I'll put this little guy to the side. Okay, so Wood Sage and Sea Salt is arguably one of the most popular fragrances from Jo Malone. I actually put out a poll on my Instagram and I will share with you guys the results, but I asked people what, their, what were their favorite Jo Malone fragrances and overwhelmingly, probably at least half of the responses were Wood Sage and Sea Salt. This is just a very likable, easy, inoffensive, beautiful scent, and I think it's kind of iconic for Jo Malone. And it has notes of sea salt, sage, grapefruit, ambret, and seaweed. And I will tell you guys, I don't, I'm not like head over heels in love with this scent. It's really nice. I think I would probably layer this fragrance. I don't love it on its own. I don't mind it though layered with the Peony and Blush Suede. But I think that for the summertime, if it's a really hot summer day and you just need something easy and breezy and light and very inoffensive and something that just is kind of like a breath of fresh air, I think this would be a great one. I like it, but sometimes that sage comes through a little much for me. I don't know, let me know down below if you are a fan of wood sage and sea salt. Personally, I think that from Jo Malone, there will be other fragrances that capture my heart a little bit more than this one. I like this one, don't get me wrong, and I'm definitely going to still play with it. You can see that I've worn a little bit of it. I'm definitely going to continue to play with this one. And like I said, when I layer this with the Peony and Blush Suede, I think it's gorgeous. And so that's what I like about the Jo Malone fragrances is you can layer them and you can kind of create your own unique scent. Um, or also, like I said, if it's just a stifling hot day and you just need something that is light and isn't going to be heavy or cause a headache or be cloying or anything, I think this would be a very refreshing one. So as for lasting power, yeah, it's pretty light and it doesn't really last a whole long time on my skin. Probably, probably three, four hours max we're talking and then I feel like I need to reapply. So not a very long lasting fragrance, but that is, um, nothing new. We all know that these are eau de cologne concentrations, so they are a very light perfume oil concentration. So now for the Jo Malone that I actually really enjoy, and this is Peony and Blush Suede. And as I mentioned, I do have a full bottle of this coming, like a large bottle. I've still been on the hunt for my perfect Jo Malone, my quote unquote perfect Jo Malone. I do have to tell you guys though, I recently revisited the Mimosa and Cardamom from my boyfriend's collection. He had an old bottle sitting there and I've really enjoyed it. I don't know why that particular bottle plays such mind games with me, um, but I'll talk more about that in another video. But yeah, the Mimosa and Cardamom, I think, is still one of my favorite scents from Jo Malone. It's so beautiful. It's just sometimes I find it strong and headachey. But yeah, we'll talk more about that in another video. So this is Peony and Blush Suede. This one I tried on my skin in the store, and I that was my first time ever trying this fragrance on my skin. Up until that point, I had only ever sprayed it on paper, and on paper, it was really unremarkable for me. So this has notes of red apple, peony, rose, jasmine, carnation, and suede. Um, so on paper, this really smelled very basic, very generic, very nondescript. I couldn't really pick out the notes except for like fresh and peony. It just smelled like a bland, fresh, like unremarkable scent. And I didn't really understand what the hype was. Like why would anybody want this? However, you guys, I don't know what it is about this. I'm really enjoying it now. So when I put this on my skin, that was when it really came to life for me and it was almost like my skin brought out that beautiful, creamy, pink smelling suede that's in here. This has a beautiful, soft, feminine suede in it. It's not animalic or dirty or screechy. It doesn't smell like a leather car seat or a leather jacket or anything like that. It smells like just a really classy, elegant, bridal, feminine, soft suede scent. Absolutely beautiful, could definitely have better longevity and better lasting power. But again, I think if you layer this with other fragrances or if you layer this with something like Wood Sage and Sea Salt, that would probably give it some oomph and a little bit more lasting power. I really, really like this. It is just, it's probably one of the cleanest, airiest, most pleasant and non-offensive perfumes I've ever smelled and that I currently have in my collection. And I do really, really like this. And 
yes I'm excited to get a full bottle as you guys know if you watch my channel and if you don't I will explain here I'm really on a mission to curate my perfect perfume collection like I still eventually want to get down to 25 or 30 perfumes and I can picture this perfume being in there because to me this is like a staple it's like an everyday anytime anywhere easy grab and go non-offensive office whatever staple and I don't have a whole lot of those like easy grab and goes. A lot of my perfumes are very strong, compliment getting, sweet, sexy, date night, um, provocative, or, you know, they're kind of, uh, or they're like expensive and whatever. They're just not perfumes I want to throw on to go to the grocery store. You know what I mean? This is one I think you could throw on to do anything, to go to the gym, to get groceries, even on a date, like a day date. It's just, and even on your wedding day, like it's such a versatile Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful scent. Super classy. I just really like it. So um, I'm getting I'm getting dangerously close to being able to like cull down my collection to my chosen 30 or so for life. Like I'm getting close, you guys. Um, but that's a different topic for another video. <laughs> so this is Peony and Blush Suede and I really, really love it and definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't. And the final fragrance in today's video is Black Opium Illicit Green. So my only beef with this perfume is that this bottle is so small. <laughs> that's my only beef, but I did not choose the bottle size. This was sent to me complimentary from fragrance by so I'm very very grateful that they sent it to me but I was really hoping for a large bottle because I love this fragrance you guys so this I think dare I say is my new favorite black opium this is my new favorite black opium this takes everything I love about the original black opium fragrances smushes it into one and also adds a creamy fig note in the background so this has notes of pear fig leaf and mandarin it also has fig jasmine and orange blossom and in the base it has bourbon vanilla coffee and patchouli so first I'll give you a close-up of the bottle really beautiful really sparkly it does have the interesting green middle looks very like alien-esque very different um, very like not of this world if you guys watch my channel you already know I'm a huge fan of the black opium fragrances I like them a lot I like that whole scent profile I love the sweetness I love the jasmine I love the coffee I love the vanilla I love it all tied in together black opium is one of my favorite perfumes and I just really like this it doesn't smell that different from the other black opiums it really doesn't but it's just good. There's nothing about this I don't like. It's sweet, it's sexy, it's dark, it's mysterious, it's creamy as well. That fig in there gives it this interesting green figgy composition. I also have this in a travel spray, which I'm really happy about because I could put this on at the beginning of the night and take the travel spray with me for later. But I really like this. This is definitely kind of a younger, going out, going out with your friends, clubby type of fragrance. But I would also wear this for a date night and I would also just put this on for like any time really anytime, anywhere in the fall or the winter. I don't think I would wear this during the day in the summer. It's a little bit too sweet and dark for that but definitely summertime evening. I think it was a really interesting thing they did in here, putting the black fig or putting the fig in here because it did add a little bit of an interesting green, creamy quality that some of the other ones didn't have. The other one that I love a lot is the Nuit Blanche, which was also a creamier version of black opium and that one is discontinued. So I've told you guys before that I think that this is a pretty good dupe for the Nuit Blanche. It doesn't smell the same, but it gives me the same vibes. And I really, really like it. So I'm going to have to do a black opium perfume declutter because I do have four bottles of black opium at this point. I have the extreme, the original, the Nuit Blanche, and I have this one. And I don't think I need that many black opiums. I want to choose one and hone in on that one and get rid of the rest. So stay tuned for that. That will be happening at some point. Um, but yeah, so this I am absolutely loving. This is a win for me. This is probably this one and the peony and blush suede are probably my two favorite from today's video. So you guys, those are the fragrances for today's haul, and I'll just give you a quick recap. So the BDK Parfums Bouquet d'Angri I think is great if you're looking for a really nice, feminine, no-fail, spring and summer, fruity floral scent. We also have the Guest Seductive Red, which is not a favorite. To me, this one is a little bit cheap smelling, and it also looks a little bit cheap. And 
think it would be good though if you like cherry and if you want something that smells kind of like Baccarat Rouge Lost Cherry in that direction but for a very very fraction of a price then it might be good to check out but personally for me I don't care for that one. Um, we also have the Black Opium Melissa Green which is my favorite from today's haul. Sweet, delicious, creamy, that delicious Black Opium DNA but with a creamy spin on it and I really like it. And then we have your wood sage and sea salt from Jo Malone and we also have your peony and blush suede and this is one of my this is my second well actually okay these two are they tied are those two tied I don't know I actually think I like the peony and blush suede a touch better if I had to choose only because the peony and blush suede smells so classy and so timeless where the black opium I think is um less versatile it's like a specific scent for a time and a place whereas I think that the peony and blush suede you could wear it anytime any place anywhere and it would just be beautiful so yeah um I do have to say my fragrance tastes are definitely evolving and changing a little bit you guys I think you will see that in videos coming up um I do have a couple of niche fragrances on the way um I'm definitely gravitating more toward these sort of fresh more refined simple fragrances that smell very clean very classy very elegant I'm definitely going more that direction that's just kind of where my tastes are headed um, and I'm really excited about this year because I think it's going to be um, there's going to be a lot of big changes with my perfume collection and I'm really really excited so yeah so that's it for today's video you guys if you have tried any of these let me know down below let me know your thoughts um, on the let me know your thoughts on the guests as a brand in general do you like any of the guest fragrances and yeah looking forward to talking to you down below so that was it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you really enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next one. Bye for now.